Hey, it's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. It is a beautiful day here on Baker's Green Acres, and we're working on a project that I just find very exciting, and I wanted to share it. It's probably going to be two, three videos because uh, I want to show how it progresses. But basically, what it is, it's this field right here. You can see behind me. That's a temporary fence with a bunch of wiener pigs in it. But this field behind me, see that fence line there? Is brand new. We've just built this over the last, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks. You know, we're working on it here and there. And we've had some really tough rain days, so we it's gone slow. But the idea here is this is a garden, believe it or not. It's kind of self cover cropped in with a bunch of different species dandelions, um, lamb's quarter. Quack grass, which is the granddaddy of them all here in where I am in northern Michigan. And that's this this grass here. And you see it's a pretty good size top on it. See those white roots right there? Those white roots go everywhere in here. And if you go through this with a rototiller and you break up all those roots, Every one of those little pieces of root will grow a new, a new grass. So quack grass is kind of a scourge. So what we're going to do here, we did this last year, and I think I showed a little bit of it. We did it in our own personal garden. This is kind of a truck garden here. Um, there's a couple people that farm this, and they distribute the produce as they see fit. <clears throat> but um, we put this permanent fence up, and I'm going to put a group of 75 about 200 pounders in here and we've done the calculation on this to see how much forage there is in here now um, in a square foot of area we we average uh, 0 0.80 0 0.93 and 0.95 and the square footage in here is 55,000 square feet so when I did the calculation on it, it comes out to about 44,000 pounds of forage material, of stuff that, that pigs will eat. And, um, you know, you do further calculation, that's 22 tons of stuff. Now, we have to have them on and off of here by the 1st of June, because we got to start getting stuff planted about that time. Right now, it's still a little cool. Uh, you wouldn't plant now. Normally what people do is they come through here and spray this with Roundup to kill everything and then rototill it all down. And that would take care of the roots. Or they would just rototill it <clears throat> and then put some plastic mulch on it. But we've had pretty good luck with this. Um, I could show you our garden over there that we've done two years in a row and there's very little quack grass growing in there. Because these pigs will go down, they'll root down, that's what they're designed to do, and they love to eat those roots. It just so happens that this group of 75 pigs, they're feeders, and they're getting ready to go to slaughter. <clears throat> so, the 22, 22 tons of forage that's on here, instead of being a liability to me, I'm using a fencing system to actually turn that into an asset, which is a very smart thing to do in the farming business. You want everything to work as an asset for you. And there's a lot of different examples of that, and there's a lot of information out there. But this is one that I've been thinking about for a long time, and I'm finally getting around to doing it. I'm lucky that I have help here to do this, and they have expertise. Now, I'm going to show you this fence a little bit. Because I figure this will wind up someplace where people will want to know how I keep them in on a garden. You can see there's a tall post and then a stubby post. The stubby post has a wire that goes through it. There's a hole drilled in it, a fiberglass post. And we run a piece of a 22-gauge uh, uh, electric wire in it. Soft electric wire, that's what I use for everything. And then uh, we put a connector on that across gates and things like that so we can open them and close them. But what that does is it keeps the pigs from getting anywhere near the woven wire fence. 
Woven wire that I use, I think I've told you before, I use 39 inch woven wire and then I put a strand of barbed wire on the top of it. But that's because I'm kind of a multi-species outfit and sometimes like in the walkways here there's some really nice grass in here. You see that? All that's nice grass in there. And I don't want to mow that per se when I have milk cows that can just, I can turn them in here and they'll just graze along and they'll they'll take all that stuff up and give us nice milk out of it and then I don't have to use a lawnmower you know I do get in here and clean it up with a mower but that's just for vain reasons okay I'm gonna cut it there and um, let's see I figure we have 19 days that we can have them in on this and uh, there's 75 animals 22 tons and I, I rendered that down and each animal is going to have to eat about 30 pounds of forage per day to get it cleaned off in time for us to plant. So let's see if we can keep track of um, the progress on that and see how it goes. Hey, here's something that I want to show you that's pretty cool. I um, had a lot of friends in the Air Force that told me they thought I'd be building birdhouses before long. And I do. And um, there's one of them right there. I put them on cedar posts. And I put them everywhere. And I have, I have uh, swallows that come, and they come every year. And I saw some uh, bluebirds this morning that I haven't seen. But I put that one up. Let's see, that one yesterday. And it was raining. And I just put it up because I wanted to get it off the ground. I just stood it up there. And it's it's just standing there. And uh, I'm not going to be able to move it now. Because I got all these birds that are flying in and out of it. See, it's really cool. Let's see if I can get a little closer. That's really cool. I love having them around. All right, Mark from Baker's Green Acres, signing off.